Stand by on the floor. News is next. Trap page 10. Check the phase on tape 8. The products you're looking at are not exactly everyday items. Take these for example. They use them at McDonald's and Burger King. And now you can have one in your own kitchen or office. Wireless headsets that let you talk on the phone, no hands needed. Can't watch TV in the shower? Now you can listen to it. This radio receives TV stations and hangs in the shower. For the really lazy, a projection alarm clock. Wake up in the middle of the night and see the time projected on your ceiling or wall. The clock won't stop the snoring, though. That's your problem. And can't get to the pool? This device gives your face a quick tan. Tired after a long day at the office? How about a set of slippers that will massage your feet, the maker claims, just by walking in them? These are things we would use at home in our cocooning uh, effects at home with our family, and these help us make life better at home. And that tends to be a new trend uh, away from the gee whiz toys of the 80s. Would you like to work out but can't get to the gym? Portable vinyl dumbbells are light enough to take anywhere. Just fill them with water, put them on special plastic bars, and you're in business at work at home on vacation. Really security conscious? Well, here's a combination travel clock and burglar alarm. Put the clock on your nightstand, detach the motion sensor, and put it on your motel or hotel door to detect intruders. All right, it's time for Prop Notes again. This time we're going to start with Proposition 103. It's about whether independent voters should be allowed to vote in primaries. It's pretty simple. Vote yes, independents can vote in the primary. Vote no, well, they can't. Propositions 104 and 105 deal with sort of a similar subject, whether lawmakers should be able to change the laws that the citizens of Arizona vote into place. So how are they different? Well, 104 was written by these guys, the lawmakers. 105 is an initiative put on the ballot by petitions. Vote yes on either one, and it will be tougher to change the laws that you vote into place. You have to decide which one you like best. Proposition 200 is about campaign finance limits. Vote yes, there will be a new five-member commission to keep track of candidates who agree to tighter rules about contributions. It would also restrict the money that can go to candidates who don't agree to those restrictions. Vote no? Well, things stay the same. Finally, there is Proposition 202. It would allow any Arizona candidate for a national office the chance to sign a pledge, a pledge that they would abolish the IRS. Vote yes, they get to sign that pledge. Vote no? Well, there's no official pledge. And that's pretty much what it boils down to. Rick DeBrule, 12 News. Here's what's coming up today at 4. Whether you're cheering for the Sun Devils or the Wildcats, we'll have all the excitement for you from the big game today. Also coming up, a lot of folks are using these. These are those pore strips that just rip the stuff out of your skin. We're going to see if they really work. That's all coming up today at 4. Okay, who wants to start first? In the Murphy School District in Southwest Phoenix, 19 of 20 students are Hispanic. Today's project, designing a math game. Democrats in the legislature say the state is shortchanging these kids. They want more dollars for bilingual education. And they want the Ames test requirement dropped when it comes time to hand out high school diplomas. We do not think that students ought to be uh, made to pass it. Bilingual students or any students? Any student. Statewide, the Hispanic dropout rate is running around 40%. With Ames testing, particularly in English, and without full bilingual education support from the state, educators fear even fewer of these kids will actually earn high school diplomas in Arizona. What will happen to the dropout rate if the Ames test goes without more bilingual education? If I go from 40 to 60, 70 percent. But the state education department says pouring millions more dollars into a broken bilingual system will not fix it. Then there's the section of the bill which says a pupil shall not be required to achieve a passing score on the Ames test to graduate from high school. We have no plans to get rid of it and there's no reason to. You know, we, what we want to do is go out to the schools and say here are your academic standards. This is what your students need to know in order to graduate. Okay, so Senor Flores, what is your game? Right now, the Ames test is still part of that game, and the governor's office says any attempt to take it out is likely to trigger a veto next year. Lou Ruggiero, 12 News. Hey, everybody. Shelly Hansel here at Coomer's Craft Mall. It's out by Metro Center. If you've never been here, boy, holiday shopping right here, right, Artie? That's you're with, right. You're with the mall. You guys have right. got a great place. Tell me about it. Well, what we have here is we have 400 crafters in this mall. We have four malls in the valley. 
We sell everything you can think of. If you're looking for a unique holiday gift, you'll find it here. And it's one of the kind thing, so if you find it, you want to take it home with you right away. But if you're shopping for somebody that uh, has everything, you're going to find something here for them. And that's what I like about it because, you know, it's one of those things that you know if you buy something that is handmade, handcrafted, crafted, not very many people are going to have something like that. That's right. We really have um, a lot of talented people. A lot of our people do this as a second job and have a second income and it's just a wonderful fun place to shop. It is and this weekend you've got your big holiday extravaganza and you've got stuff out in the parking lot. That's Shall right, we go we check do. it out? Yes. All right. Hey, here we are out in the parking lot and joining me now, Sue Yancey, how Hi, are you Shelley? dear? We, this is a great thing. It's a holiday extravaganza so outside crafters as well. That's right. We have over 70 crafters that are going to be in our parking lot this weekend. Uh, just on Saturday from 10 to 5. We have Coomers crafters like Becky over here, and we also have people from outside of Coomers. Um, we're going to have kettle corn and a Santa's Village for the kids to come and shop for under ten dollars. Wow! They'll also be able to make cookies, and they're going to be able to make an ornament. And they'll also get help from our friend here. That's right, our Santa's elf. Uh huh. So the kids can come out, and that way they can buy a gift for mom and dad, and they don't have to. That it can be all wrapped, and they'll be a big surprise. Right. The elves will help them wrap it, so mom and dad won't see it when they go out of the store. Wow! And where else, folks, can you find a poo pot? Get it? Poo pot. Uh -huh. Okay, so it's going to be a great holiday extravaganza here at the Coomers Craft Mall out by Metro Center, and we all know it's going to be a great something to do.